Dr. David Lynn Board Certified Laser Dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about something which is, I guess, uh, close to what, uh, close to my heart, yeah, because I do a lot of uh, scar revision topics. And this video is very important. It is actually very, very important because when we look at things like skin cancer and there's a breakthrough in regards to prevention of skin cancer, what I'm telling you today is basically prevention and treatment of early scars using a topical, yeah? So we've spent many, many uh, um, years and huge budgets actually trying to figure out how to treat acne scars with established acne scars. Things like lasers, microneedling, microneedling RF, TCA peels, TCA cross, phenol peels, subcision, uh, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, those methods certainly do help establish acne scars, especially when it comes to hard to treat scars. But today's video is basically how to treat um, early scars or how to reduce scarring in the general population. Super important because something like this in the US only costs uh, realistically between $12 to $15 US. And the data is now there because we've got three to four really, really good studies over the last few years, including one recent study in 2019, which actually confirms our um, suspicions in regards to the management of early acne and early acne scars. So guys, I think where we're going to do a shout out and, and actually call for action is acne.org. Yeah? So as a doctor, I'm not allowed to be on that forum. But I do know lots and lots of good moderators such as um, uh, BA, Cirrus Lee and many others. Yeah? Because these guys uh, help the scar community out there. So I hope that um, possibly with, uh, I guess, a little bit more intervention from uh, the community, uh, we can ask acne.org to uh, stock this and actually promote this together with their benzyl peroxide. So acne.org, as you know, is a big scar community which is moderated by people who are very, very experienced. In fact, most of the moderators are actually more experienced than uh, general dermatologists and certainly even some uh, surgical dermatologists. So, um, Acne.org actually sells good things to actually, uh, I guess, treat and prevent acne such as benzyl peroxide. But if they can do a, a deal with uh, Galderma, it probably would save a lot of patients over multi multiple uh, years ahead uh, to actually treat early scars or reduce scars. So let's get into it, yeah? Um, so acne scarring basically is, um, we have a couple of variables which are predictable in regards to acne scarring. First of all, it's the amount of inflammation. Some patients have a tremendous amount of inflammation with nodular cystic acne, bacne, and, and even acne fulminans. But at the end of the day, they don't have very much in the way of scarring. So uh, there's something going on there. And basically, we've investigated, we know why, but we can't actually alter the genetics, yeah? So we can't actually do uh, gene therapy as yet. So number one, acne scars in regards to inflammation. The bigger the inflammation, usually uh, the bigger the scars. Number two, time to, to both active treatment but effective treatment which means if you have grumbling acne over many many years uh, chances are you're going to collect more scars so when patients see me and they actually have three or four lesions every month for example you know adult female jawline hormonal acne where there's not much going on maybe about three to five to ten lesions but if 50 percent of that scars and you multiply that over 12 which is one year and you multiply that by two which is over two years you're basically collecting anywhere between 30 to 60 scars so remember the onset to when effective treatments or when you first diagnose it to effective treatments, that's most important there yeah? because um, when you have effective treatments, basically you decrease the amount of scarring. So other factors which may come into consideration including ethnicity. So we know that with Asians, they have a particular form of uh, scarring, including um, shallow box scar scarring. They also get a lot of open pits um, and, and ice pick scars as well as rolling scars. Yeah? So um, when you look at the, I guess, uh, ethnicities, Sure, um, ethnics such as Asians uh, do get usually worse acne, but also uh, uh, worse scarring as well. I've covered a few things in regards to diet in my previous video, so that's a pretty interesting video because we've identified you know, the food groups that actually make acne worse. So another factor which is very important is, like I mentioned, acne excoriae. So the acne excoriae is basically very common in females. Yeah? So basically if you have adult female jawline hormonal acne, or you have um, acne which is grumbling uh, due to your period cycles and um, uh, menstrual changes, Together with stress uh, and habit, it's a form of OCD. Yeah? So you have these deep-seated papules and pustules, usually around the jawline, and they can't be squeezed. Unlike, unlike teenage acne, where you can actually squeeze some blackheads and, and, and pus, uh, deep-seated uh, female jawline hormonal acne is usually bad because it's called picker's acne, yeah? because you're actually picking, and, and that leaves really, really deep scars. So. In summary, those factors are the ones which actually are predisposed to uh, uh, acne scarring, uh, which is uh, severe. Okay, so let's get into what, um, how we can actually treat acne scars. So, 
This video basically, I'm just going to talk about topicals, yeah, because um, when I talk about, uh, I guess, scar revision techniques, it probably is about two, two, three hour video. So I'll actually try to break it up in series. So today would be, how does this actually help you? First thing, as we all know, with a dapalene or, or retinoid, what it does is that it decreases the amount of acne. Most importantly, it decreases inflammation. So when we look at acne, we're looking at four things, yeah, four, four things only. Number one, inflammation. Number two, uh, sebum production or oil. Uh, number three, uh, the pathogenesis behind that is actually P. acnes, which is a bacteria. Uh, and number four, it's a differentiation of the neck of the oil gland, which is uh, um, keratinization. Yeah? So we can modify all four factors, we get less acne. So what does this do? Retinoids, as you know, it can do all that. Yeah? So once again, with acne.org, it's a great site. They have good products. And what they use is benzyl peroxide, which is great because it, that too can modify the inflammatory markers. But if you're using this together with um, benzyl peroxide, it's even better. So in Australia, we have this called Epiduo, which is basically a dapalene together with uh, benzyl peroxide. Now, uh, so we talk about, I guess, the way this can actually reduce the, fa the four factors to decrease acne. How can this actually help with scars? So when it comes to retinoids, it's been well established over the last, oh, probably about four decades, yeah, from Griffiths, um, an, an English guy I used to work with. So. He actually, uh, um, I guess, did the research uh, in the 90s in regards to retinoids and how it actually affects the skin. So we know the data's there, yeah? So it's over 100 good papers. And um, it works by, number one, uh, decreasing the, uh, I guess, MMPs, yeah? Metallic, metallic proteinases, which actually uh, break up collagen. So it decreases MMP1 and MMP2. Most importantly, it stimulates fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are basically the cells in your dermis which produces collagen. In the context of scarring, uh, it's usually collagen 1 and collagen 3 that needs upregulation, yeah? And then last of all, the fibroblasts uh, improve with, uh, I guess, improve the scars with uh, increased elastin, which is like a scaffolding of your, uh, of your skin, together with hyaluronic acid. So retinoids actually do all that, yeah? It can actually stimulate the fibroblasts to uh, produce more collagen. And in the case of atrophic scars, that's pretty good because what you remodel is for, yours, for you to keep. Um, I can go on in regards to, uh, I guess, atrophic scars and the risk benefit ratio of, uh, of uh, uh, hyaluronic acid fillers and, and sculpture and all that down the track because that's another half an hour, I guess, uh, um, lecture on things. So we're just concentrating on this. Now, um, research has shown in the last, I guess, uh, two years, most recent papers actually is very exciting because you can tell I'm excited, yes. <laughs> the, the most uh, recent papers in 2019 show that um, uh, with 0.3% adapalene um, plus benzyl peroxide, 2.5%, we've got a good, uh, I guess, it, it's, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say good, but it's actually demonstrable, significantly demonstrable improvement in um, atrophic scars. So that's groundbreaking because there's about three or four uh, articles in regards to that. Now. The one uh, that's most recent basically shows that um, with nightly use, uh, so that, I guess that paper is very important, yeah, because uh, first of all, uh, it's done by some guys which I know very well and who are very highly regarded in dermatology. I'll go through, first of all, the conflicts of interest. Yes, uh, in that paper, uh, Galderma did sponsor um, uh, the study. The flip side is that the guys which I know in the US are very above board, so I have absolutely confidence uh, in their data, uh, which I think is absolute. So in that, um, uh, I guess, in that study, they did a split phase, yeah? So one was a vehicle and the other was um, uh, adapalene 0.3 and benzyl peroxide uh, 2.5. And basically it's a nightly application for a period of um, nearly half a year, six months, yeah? So um, looking at 24 months. And that paper actually showed that when investigators actually looked, the investigators were blinded as well, so they didn't know which side was uh, which. Uh, and that paper was very good because it showed both assessor, right, so the person assessing the uh, treated side versus untreated side, together with the patient, gave both a subjective, which is patient, and objective, which is assessor, improvement of 80%. So 80% of these patients responded. Um, and that's very interesting because 80% is a huge amount. Now, when we look at the other data, how significant is that 80% response? The answer is not great. Yeah? So you're not going to get something like 70-80%, uh, um, I guess, of your scars gone. Still, it's between, anywhere between 13% all the way up to 18%. So on average, it's about 15% scar reduction. And we measure that both with 
uh, 2D as well as 3D analysis. So still, you know, to do to have a cream, yeah, and, and to actually have a reduction in, in scarring, that's pretty significant because, especially in the U.S., when it costs real, realistically, you know, three or four cups of coffee, it's a little bit more expensive in Australia, looking about eighty odd dollars. But in the U.S., buying it from uh, Target, Walmart, CVS, even Amazon, you're paying twelve bucks, twelve dollars U.S. for a, a cream which not only works for your acne but has the potential uh, to actually decrease scars. So the other papers done in 2017, another one done in 2018, also looked at um, uh, cream as in uh, different 0.3% without the benzyl peroxide as a uniform application on the face, yeah, on patients with um, grade three and grade four scars. So grade three, grade four is basically Goodman and Barron scale. Um, and, and it's basically scars which are moderate to severe. Grade four is basically Severe scars, which can be seen at conversational distance, I actually disagree with Greg, Greg's good friend of mine, uh, Greg's, uh, um, I guess, uh, distance, yeah? So for him, it's 50 centimeters. I disagree, I think it's 80 centimeters is conversational, because when you breach that 50 centimeter, number one, you're intimate with a patient, which you shouldn't be, or number two, um, you're a freak or, or really creepy, yeah? So that's probably not a good idea, less than 50. So we're talking about grade three, grade four. So grade four, basically, scars which are um, non-distensible, yeah, which means you can't stretch it out. Uh, also, uh, not covered up with light makeup, nor can it be covered with uh, the normal shadow of uh, a male beard. So that's how I base a lot of my uh, acne scar, um, I guess, assessments here, yeah, because that gives you an objective uh, viewpoint as well. So all these patients with grade three and grade four, so we're not talking about you know, grade one, grade two, which is mild um, scarring or PIH or PIE or, or skin color changes. We're talking about patients with actual scars. And the scars which I guess responded include atrophic scars. Yeah? So atrophic scars include things like uh, box scar scarring, uh, uh, rolling scars, and that further extends to things like uh, ice pick scarring, pick scarring, and, and et cetera. Yeah? So we, we exclude hypertrophic. Hypertrophic means it's raised. So that study recruited these patients. Uh, they used uh, once a day for the first four weeks and then increased it to twice a day over the next uh, 20 weeks. And the study was ended at, at uh, week uh, um, 24. Right? Basically, they finished their application by week 20. They got assessed at uh, week 24. And the great thing with this study is this. So here's the data from it. And you can actually read the paper down below. Yeah? So the data from this is super exciting because uh, when it comes to people who respond, yeah, so first of all, subjective. So subjective is what the patient feels. Yeah. So what the patient feels basically is is 89% uh, of the patients feel that uh, it's done something. Yeah. 11% uh, um, uh, basically didn't have uh, any outcome. Yeah. Which basically means uh, scarred as is or very little or no improvement. Yeah. So 11%. But. Um, 89% actually had a subjective improvement, which is huge, yeah, because most patients with uh, acne scars, their subjective, I guess, assessment or their subjective viewpoint is very different compared to objective measurements. So that's kind of interesting because the vast majority say, hey, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's helped. And these guys weren't paid to do that as well, so it's actually pretty cool. So objective assessment basically is um, the assessor looking at the scar. So it's quite remarkable because 11% uh, had complete removal of the scar. Yeah? That's huge because if we're talking about grade three, grade four, for one in 10 uh, patients to have complete effacement of scars, that's almost, with the cream, that's almost unheard of. Yeah? So that's significant. And I'll just go through the data here. One third of those had um, further patients, one third of those, so over 33%, had further moderate to marked improvement, yeah? which is pretty spectacular because when you're looking at the data, it's nearly 50% that had moderate to really, really good to absolute improvement, which is huge. And most importantly, 0%, none of them actually went backwards. So um, that's to me, that's you know, if, if you have acne scarring, you, you can't go past this. Yeah, once again, I've got no affiliation with Galderma at all. I used to be an advisor maybe six years ago, but now I've got no association with them at all. But it makes, I guess, um, not only my job a little bit easier, but also most importantly, it helps patients. Yeah, because you're using a cost effective cream to actually help you, um, and, and that's very important. So, and the third thing which I, um, I nearly missed it, is that. When we took biopsies of the, uh, of the patients uh, with their acne scarring, yeah? um, so baseline compared to uh, uh, week 24, there's an increase in both collagen 1 and collagen 3, yeah? which is confirmed by um, biopsy. 
So remember, all of these, are, I think the variables are, 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 are very, very good, very exciting, yeah, because it, it shows both subjective, objective, histological improvement of acne scars. So guys, look, um, that completes this lecture. I know it's, um, I sound excited, I am, yeah, seriously, because um, it's the first time whereby, you know, we've shown a dramatic uh, improvement in, in scar remodeling using a very cheap, uh, very effective and very obtainable uh, topical. In this situation, it's a second generation retinoid. So I'll quickly finish this video on how to actually use this. Yeah? So if you have acne and acne scarring, uh, if you can get yourself the um, BPO, uh, that's great. With benzoyl peroxide together with the 0.1, that's better. Oh, 0 0.3 is even better. Problem being is that once you actually go up the concentration, what happens is that you can get skin irritation. So you should be very accurate with your skin, skin care. Yeah? So you start things with, uh, for example, sunscreen to minimize the, uh, um, I guess, not only sun exposure, but the experience of sunburn, yeah? because that can irritate your skin. Um, so that's the first thing. Cleanses, use something very simple, yeah? simple moisturizer, whatever you like, something like, you know, uh, acne.org actually sells that stuff, which I think is great because they're all uh, cost effective, but also effective, non-irritating uh, uh, topicals. Yeah? So you want to start maybe two to three nights per week and increase is tolerated. The most important thing with this, obviously, is to treat your acne prone area. So one of the studies that treated the whole face, but I think in uh, practicality, what you should do is just put in acne prone areas and spot treatment to the scars. Can you overdo it? Um, the answer is yes, yeah, but if you get, you're that patient who can actually tolerate uh, things like uh, uh, twice a day application between 0.3% uh, uh, with a benzoyl peroxide, if you can tolerate that, it's better, yeah? So um, obviously if you can't, um, two, three times per week, that's great. Moisturize half an hour before, and if needed, moisturize half an hour later. You keep things simple, you, you simplify to amplify, you'll get places quicker, okay guys? So finally, the shout, shout out to, I guess, all the uh, moderators on acne.org. Uh, if you can point them out to these papers, they'll be brilliant because, um, you know, patients with, I guess, who are suffering from acne scars and feeling hopeless and, and um, you know, it's a real emotional, uh, I guess, roller coaster that patients go through, and I understand that because I, you know, treat at least half a dozen acne scars per day. So I guess, you know, shout out to acne.org. If they can actually look at stocking this, um, uh, it would be great. Yeah? And the, the people that actually benefit it is basically the acne sufferers, yeah? Guys, thanks very much for watching this video. It's, um, yeah, I guess it's, it's pretty groundbreaking for me. Uh, more info down below. And the other thing as well, I'm pretty active on Instagram. So I give you guys little hints, you know, maybe one, two minute hints. Uh, but it's a whole library of, of basically how to look after your skin, especially acne prone patients. Guys, thanks for your attention. I'll see you uh, next week. Bye.